Amen. So, Father, we thank you so much for your love towards us. And I thank you, Father, for the word that you've placed in our hearts today that Pastor Amanda and I are going to speak. And then, Father, I pray that there's no, nothing that can be twisted, nothing that can be turned into yes. the condemnation or anything turned into finger pointing. But, Father, truly, your word and your heart comes forth in love. That's, that's the most important thing to us, God, is that you are represented in love. That your word and who you are is represented in grace. Yeah. And that, Father, that you give us your spirit to empower us to do your will, to do the work of the ministry. And so as we preach today, Lord, I thank you that we have the mind of Christ. Yes. That our thoughts are put together and constructed by you, Holy Spirit that our tongues are anointed to declare this word today. And Father, I thank you that right now we surrender and say we have ears to hear and our eyes will see today by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And we ask that your seed of the word be planted into our hearts deeper, yes. the birds can't steal it away. But Father, I thank you, Lord, that we will protect this word, that we will pay attention, that we will concentrate, that we will remain focused on what yes. you have to say today. Holy Spirit, I ask your assistance in destroying every distraction today. Help us concentrate. Help us see. Help us hear. Right now, anything distracting, whether it be mental, emotional, physical, whatever it may be, electronic, whatever it may be, may the distraction not distract us from hearing what you have to say today. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus, and everybody said... Amen. amen and amen and amen. Thank you, my brother. Amen. Leading out of darkness. That is what I heard God say about 11 weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Leading out of darkness. And the only way we can lead out of darkness is when we are leading in God's love. Mm -hmm. If I lead in any other capacity... then God's love being the forefront of what I do. I am not leading out of darkness. I'm still leading parallel to it. Mm -hmm. And God has placed it on my heart to portray in a way that we have to understand the importance and severity of the exit plan from the world into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. That we if we don't take it serious that we are not truly helping people exit the things of the world, but we are causing them to skirt on the borders. And I believe that God doesn't want us to live on the borders of things. He desires us to enter into the fullness of things. Amen. And so it has been with urgency that God has put on my heart that we should lead out of love in order to lead out of darkness. Yes. Early in this series, we discovered something that's so important that I pray that has been a foundation that has been laid in your life that you will not waver from. And that is this, that salvation is more than fire insurance. That salvation is more than a saving from hell. That salvation is a restoration of who God created me to be in the fullness and capacity that He created me for Amen. and my purpose. Amen. Say sozo. Sozo. Salvation. 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 Come on, say it again. Salvation. Salvation. I am restored. I am restored. To my created intent. To my created intent. And purpose. And purpose. Look at somebody and say, hey, restored one. Hey, restored one. Our purpose is to glorify God through our faith and surrender. It's simple. Our purpose is to glorify God through our faith and thus our surrender. Those two things are some of the fundamental things that a born-again believer has to be established in your day-to-day -day walk. is faith and surrender. Say it with me. Say faith, faith, surrender. Surrender. Look at somebody and say faith, faith, surrender. surrender. I want this side to say faith. faith. This side surrender. Surrender. Faith. Surrender. Faith. Surrender. 
Those are the two things we have to be a part of our foundational belief system. Yeah. Our purpose is to glorify God through faith and surrender. He created us to expand His invisible, heavenly, heavenly kingdom in the visible, tangible earth. Our purpose mm -hmm. has never changed. Yes. Our purpose has never changed. Sin did not change our purpose. It just delayed the outcome. It just distracted the vision from us. But we have been redeemed from sin. We have been redeemed from the curse. We have been redeemed because we are now born again. Our intent, our created purpose has been restored. It has never changed. That's right. That's right. Just as God has never changed. What he set in motion has never changed. That's right. He is the same. So how we fulfill our purpose is not changing who he has created us to be. How can we fulfill this never changing purpose? Number one. It started with faith, and it remains by faith. That's right. Our purpose, our plan, our creation, it started in faith, and it remains by faith. I mean, we can't waver in it. Not one bit. That's right. We can't doubt it. We can't question God in it. We have to trust Him in it 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. never changed. And the way that we walk in this never changing purpose is, is know this, it started in faith and it continues in faith. You know, I, I think about the children of Israel and how, you know, they were led into captivity. They were put back into captivity for seven years yeah. put into Babylon. But do you know they had to have faith because there was a promise? Because in Jeremiah 29, it tells them, I, have, I know the plans I have for you. And he tells them this while they're going to captivity. And he's going to say, you're going to be there for 70 years. Yet, I know the plans that I have for you. Therefore, be a blessing wherever you are. Look at God. Look, that's what he tells us. No matter what you're going through, you continue to be a blessing wherever you are. You continue to grow. You continue to cultivate. Our purpose never changes no matter what we're going through. It starts in faith. It ends in faith. Our faith cannot waver. We cannot stop just because of the circumstances. Amen. Amen. No matter the circumstances. And he told them, he said, you bless whatever kingdom you were set under. You bless wherever you are being planted. You continue to to prosper there. You continue to multiply there. You do not hold back just because of what your circumstances look like. Because if you do that, depression comes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Discouragement comes. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we start looking for self instead of looking to him and keeping our eyes on him. He says, I know the plans I have for you. Mm. That means that you keep going. You keep doing. You don't stop. Because I know I have the plans for you. We start in faith. We end in faith. I can't allow my journey to steal my peace. That's right. I can't allow my place to steal my faith. That's right. Right? And I can't allow anyone to take my joy. That's right. And we have to have peace, joy, mm. in the middle of the current situation on the journey to the promise. It started in faith, and it remains by faith. And I like that you said joy because Acts 2.28 says, You have made known to me the ways of life. You will fill me, infusing my soul with joy with your presence. Joy with your presence. Joy with your presence. It's when we're not in the presence of God is when joy is robbed. You, the devil can't steal in the middle of the presence That's of God right. because he can't come. Where the presence is dwelling. That's right. 
Amen? Amen. So I get under the shadow of the wing of the Almighty. Amen. Guess what? Guess who's not hanging out under the shadow of the wing of the Almighty? My enemy's not. Why? He is not allowed there. Amen. He cannot steal what he cannot touch. That's right. That's right. Look at somebody say, he ain't touching my stuff no more. He can't steal when you're abiding in his presence. That's right. No. Here's the second thing. It started with honor. Mm. And it remains with honor. My never-changing purpose started in faith and it started in honor. And it remains in faith. And thus it also remains a walk of honor. My purpose cannot be fulfilled without honor being present in the journey. Amen. I cannot fulfill purpose if I'm not on the road of honor. See, we're in an age where the church has gradually lost the heart of honor. It has been called a place of quote-unquote healing, but has not been established as a house of honor. Just because it calls itself healing doesn't mean that it's being healed by the things of God. Amen. God is not just a mere healer. Mm. He is a restorer. That's right. That's right. He brings wholeness. He's going to get to the root to dig it out and to make you whole. That's right. He don't cover it up. For the weeds to but come see, up. Even in your healing. Mm -hmm. Comes by faith. Yes. Amen. And remains in faith. Amen. Amen. Faith is so important. Mm -hmm. I know faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. But faith without honor. Mm -hmm. Is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's pointless. In fact, it doesn't coexist. Exist. Mm -hmm. You can't have true faith without honor. It appears that there is a common trend in honoring Jesus as Savior, but not continuing down the road of honor, which leads to Jesus being our Lord. Mm -hmm. I thank God for the saving grace. Amen. I didn't want to spend eternity in damnation and darkness or separated from the presence of God. And I don't really think that many people will desire that. There are some who say they do, but when they experience it, they're going to just say, God, I'm sorry. Right. They don't realize what they have chosen upon themselves is not just something temporal that they can change, but it is for an eternity. We have to realize the decisions and actions and things we do now go past the moment and echo throughout eternity. I'm making eternal decisions. Amen. The eternal decision. Eternal decisions. And I have to start walking in and acting like that every day I'm making a eternal or an, an eternal decision. Amen. An eternal impact. With an eternal purpose. Amen. Faith will last for the eternity. It will not change. Honor will be required for eternity. Amen. And it will not change. Jesus didn't come to do away with honor. He came to restore the ability for us to honor God. To yes. fear Him yes. in the correct manner and way. The word Lord means this, according to the Oxford Dictionary. It means someone or something having power, authority, or influence as a master or ruler. That's what that word Lord means. How many of you have heard Jesus is Lord? Amen. All right? So the word Lord there means someone or something having power, authority, or influence as a master or ruler. So have I allowed Jesus to have the power over my life? Have I surrendered my will to Christ's authority? Is Jesus influencing my life? 
Or is the world influencing my life? Is Jesus really my master? And is Jesus really my ruler? And if he's not any of these things, my friend, I'm here to tell you this huge, huge shocking announcement to you. He has yet to become Lord of your life. Amen. He has yet to become Lord. And we have to have a revival of Lordship return to the body of Christ. Not just a Savior, but a Lord. Not just to enter the gate, but to walk the straight and narrow. To make an impact into this world. We cannot win this world. We cannot bring hope to this world if we are not on the road of honor. Amen. You can call yourself a house of healing, but really you're a hospice. Not really healing, it's just covering the wound until death. Jesus came for the restoration of humanity. That he loved us so much that even though we didn't deserve it, that we didn't love him, he first loved us. Amen. Don't forget your role. Don't forget your position. Don't think because God thought of you that much that you're above who he really is. Mm. You did not create God. Yeah. He created you. That's right. I haven't arrived. He has. He has. A church that refuses to teach lordship and focuses only on quote-unquote friendship will remain immature and powerless. And I use this word friendship very loosely <laughs> yeah. because God desires mm -hmm. for us to be friends. Yes. He does. He desires for us to walk in a friendship relationship with Him. But see, even the status of true friendship to the Lord requires surrender and sacrifice. Yep. It does, friend. I'm here to tell you. We sang a song, I'm a friend of God. No, it should have said, I can be a friend of That's God. That's right. <laughs> because most of us are not friends of God. No. Nope. You might think he's my homeboy or partner, but I'm, prove it to me. John 15, 14. You are my friends if you keep on doing the things which I command you to do. You are my friends if there's a contingency upon Ooh. a friendship. God's friendship with you is, is not this considered a worldly friendship. It's not a two-way thing. God says, you do what I do, and you're my friend. If you don't, you're my enemy. Now, this doesn't have anything to do with sonship rights. No, this is not sonship rights. This is a friendship. That's right. Understand that there is different levels of relationship with the Father. Yep. There's different levels of relationship with the Father. The lowest relationship with Him is... A Savior-only relationship. Wow. That is the bottom of the line. The minimum I can possibly do. That's living on the border. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. And, and you know, it goes through that. You know, we talk about sonship. But we also want to do is... Whatever I wish, you know, whatever I ask of God, he said he's going to do of me. But you know there's a contingency with that? Yes, there is. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, if we're united and my message lives in your heart, then ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. But there's a lot of people that aren't remaining. No. That are asking. They're and asking. And get disappointed when nothing happens. Right. And the contingency is the remaining. And people get upset when we talk about the remaining. They talk about obeying. They said, oh, that's the law. No, no it's, it's not. the principle of the kingdom. It has nothing to do with the old covenant. It has nothing to do with the Ten Commandments. This is the established law from the very beginning. When God created mankind, he established it, and Jesus didn't come to break the law. Jesus fulfilled it. He, he actually continued it. He and continued it, it yeah. He sits there, and he's saying, God, take this from me. I, this is so hard to do. I want to obey. But, he, you know, he's like, but nevertheless... It's your will, not my will. He was battling the flesh all the way to the end. 
But he showed us the flesh does not have to conquer our life. Yes. That he came and conquered it. So now you and I have the ability to conquer it, not on our own, but through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. That's right. Jesus said, I have to go because if, if I don't go, then the, the Spirit of God, the gift of God, His Holy Spirit can't come and dwell in every one of you. You're only going to see me. I'm the fulfillment. But I'm going to tell you what, when I go and conquer this, all of us will have the fulfillment promise that can reside within us. You have the fulfillment promise residing in you. But I'm going to tell you, a lot of times it is kept captured, captivated, underground. Because we still remain in our flesh instead of abiding in his way. And I've got to come to a place to change my residency. Amen. I've got to stop having a vacation house yes. over on the other side of the border. Amen. Living in the world. Mm. I'm trying to work in the kingdom and vacation in the world. Hello? And then we wonder why we're contaminated. We're weak. We're wondering why it's taking so long for things to happen. And why do I always got to come back and get cleansed up? Because you're going and swimming in the sea of, uh, of a cesspool. <laughs> and listen, you can't help be contaminated when you go swim in the sewer. That's right. Man. You are my friends if you keep on doing the things which I command you to do. You don't hear that preach a lot, do you? Mm -mm. I am a friend of God. I love that song. I sang that song. Yeah. But if I didn't do what he commanded me to do, I'm not a friend. My relationship status is not friendship. The rude awakening, I know. That's Amen. why I told you, hear my heart today. Pay attention because you hear something wrong and you're going to get offended. Amen. You're going to get offended if you hear it wrong and take it wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, he told me I ain't a friend of God. Are you, are you obeying his command? You may be living on the border at the bottom of the low level as Jesus is your Savior, but I'm going to tell you there is a level of a relationship that we grow in mm -hmm. where we actually can become friends with God. There's examples of friends of God within the Bible. Yeah. And it's amazing. Yeah. See, if we have a church that but if we have a church that teaches surrender and lordship, it will in turn produce true friends of God. Mm -hmm. And friends love to be together. Yes. They share things with each other. They hang out mm -hmm. with each other. And check this out. A true friend is going to tell you something before everybody else knows. Yeah. I desire that with God. Yes. That's a friendship Level. You know him and Abraham had that? Yeah. Do you know that God consulted Abraham before he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah? Yeah. He actually consulted him. Yes. And said, hey, let's, let's hear what he's got to say. Did you know Abraham negotiated with God and said, hey, man, uh, listen now, because he knew that his, he had family that was there. Yeah. But God knew he had family. He, he knew that. He, he knew, knew his that. heart. He knew, but he still wanted to But he wanted to hear, hear his him. heart. That's right. But one thing about Abraham was, he obeyed the command. That's right. He didn't question it. He even got up early in the morning and was ready to sacrifice the gift yeah. that God gave him. That's right. It's our obey, obeying the commands of the Lord, which are established in the reverence and honor and fear of God. Yes. Which establishes the growth in our relationship from just being <laughs> saved to friend. My Father is glorified and honored in this when you bear much fruit and you prove yourselves to be true disciples. How about this, John 14, 21? Yeah. The person who has my commands and keeps them is the one who really loves me. Mm. Yep. And whoever really loves me will be loved by my Father. And I too will love them and will show and reveal and manifest myself to them. I will let myself be clearly seen by him and make myself real to him. 
John 15, 10, if you keep my commandments and obey my teachings, you will remain in my love, just as I kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. Honoring and surrendering to the commands and the will of God creates revelation in my life. Amen. How, how many want the revelation of the Word of God? You want revelation knowledge. I want knowledge. He just told you here. He reveals himself, manifests himself, clearly is shown to those who does what? The person who keeps my commands. Amen. What commands? There are two commands we talked about, mm -hmm. right? And also those who abide within the guidelines of the kingdom. Amen. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your might, and your soul, everything that's within you. And the second is like the first, that you love your neighbor as you do yourself. Yes. Right? With these two things, he commands us these two things. Actually, here's another thing he commanded you. Go ye to all the world and preach the gospel and the good news. Yes. So if you aren't obeying that command, guess what? You're not getting the full manifestation of what he desires for you. Amen. Right? Because those who obey his commands, he reveals himself to. Yeah. So if I want a deeper revelation, then I have to have a deeper walk of honor and surrender to obey the commands of the kingdom. Now, I have heard this argument that he told them that, then he told them to wait. But what did he tell them to wait for? The empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, they were talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Because they couldn't do it without him. Right. When this happens, they were waiting for it. Go wait, but guess what? The wait, wait. is over. The wait is over. The wait so is over. That's, that's the whole thing. Yes, he told them that, and then he told them to wait for the empowerment. Are you empowered now? Yes. Then what are you waiting for? The waiting's over. <laughs> come on. That's, that's what, come on, that's the word, right? If I'm empowered in Christ... Through the Holy Spirit, yeah. what am I waiting on now? They waited, and guess what? The Holy Spirit came. Yeah. Filled the upper room and filled them. People who had no character in their life, no. people who were up and down, people who that were in and out, people who were hypocritical, now had the ability to stand in faith that they were willing to die for the cause. Yeah. Amen. Until... Yeah. You stop waiting and allow the Holy Spirit to empower you. You will always coward yourself yes. when the world puts some kind of resistance on you. Yeah. And friend, I'm here to tell you that the world itself is feeling itself. And it's feeling like it can come against the body of Christ and conquer. Amen. But it's going to be those who know who they are in Jesus, who That's have right. obeyed the command, who he has made himself real to. Not a pseudo-Jesus, not an image or an idol of a man on a cross. But I'm talking about a revelation that has been given to them because of the time that they spent in the presence of God, diving into his word, and will not allow anything to stop it. That they have taken priority, that God is number one, and nothing else will happen without God being priority in your life you will be overcome when the world comes to attack you I'm telling Amen. you he come to kill steal and destroy but he can't do it to those who are in Christ Jesus that's right to those who have been founded in the word Amen. listen I have to be founded in the word to be able to stand in this day in this hour look at somebody and ask them are you ready are to you make ready a stand to make the stand Salvation without lordship is not salvation. It's called selfishness. A self-centered life cannot be God-focused. You cannot say, I'm focused on God and be self-centered. You're lying. You are your God. Mm. Whatever you focus on, whatever you focus on is your God. Yeah. Amen. If I'm not God-focused, I'm blinded to God's purpose in me. Mm. If I'm not God-focused, I'm blinded to God's purpose within me. You will never know your purpose until you get your eyes off of this world and focused on God. As long as you stay unfocused, you will be unproductive. Amen. Mm -hmm. I desire the glory of God. How about you? Amen. Come on, do you? Yeah. Who in Amen. here right now desires the glory of God? Amen. Amen? Amen. Now. That was kind of a trick question. Because that question can be interpreted in two ways. Mm -hmm. I didn't do it to set you up because I still want you to respond to me, okay? Yeah. But I'm going to teach you something here. It can be 
interpreted in two ways. Number one, it can be interpreted, I desire God's presence to you, right? Mm -hmm. So I ask the question, do you want to give glory to God or I want to glorify God? How many want God's glory? Amen. Everybody said yes. It can be interpreted as, do you desire God's presence? Yeah. All right. Why? Second way it can be interpreted is, is do you desire God to be honored? But I want us to all stop and think when I said, I want the glory of God, which of the two did you respond to? Mm. His presence or his honor? You didn't think both. No. I guarantee you. No, Most no. of us Most desire of us presence. Desired the presence. Let's be That's honest. Right. Let's with be each honest. Other. Most, Most of us, us said, desire I want, presence. When we said, I want God's glory, right? I want, I, how many desire God's glory? Most of us are desiring His, his manifestation, yes. His yeah. presence. And the question is, is ask ourselves, why? Really, root cause, why do I want that? Mm -hmm. I'm not asking you to answer it out loud. I'm, I'm pausing for you to think. If I'm not making you think, I'm not doing my job. <laughs> Right? So if I desire God's glory, I can either say I'm desiring his presence, or the glory also means his honor. Yes. I'm desiring his honor. Mm -hmm. Right? And both of them are actually good desires. There's nothing wrong with his presence, and there's nothing wrong with his honor. But see, one of them is a benefit, and the other one is an act of worship. But right there, I proved a point. Most of us, when we say something about God, are benefit-driven. Yes. Mm-hmm. Making you think now, aren't I? I mean, you want to glorify God. I want to see God's glory. Yeah. I want to see God's glory. You could say, I want to see God honored. Yes. And when I honor God, I receive his glory, his presence. Amen. And what happens is, is we focus on the benefit first. Mm -hmm. And we fail the worship. To where something we do want God, but why? Because we want the benefit, because we want to feel the presence. We want to have a supernatural encounter. Mm -hmm. Right? We want to record it so I can see dust in the, in the air. <laughs> I want to see a, a, a feather fall from the sky and gold dust come out of a Bible, oil. Have you seen it? We want to have deliverance, but we don't want to have the necessary of getting rid of what's inside of us that's hindering that in order to see that. That's right. That's it. We, we, want, we like, want it. Why are we having these things happen in church? Well, how much have you prepared to get here? Huh? <laughs> I mean, exactly I mean, that's right. <laughs> So do you understand what I just set you up to see? Mm -hmm. Right? And I didn't do that to be mean, but I did it to... So I want you to question right. my intent of why I desire God's glory. Yeah. But see, God's glory can either be I desire His presence. Yes. Or I desire God to be glorified in honor. Yes. And we have to be sure that the intent of our heart day to day... It's not the benefit of his presence that I desire. Because that's my, your heart. That's my, yeah. That's your but heart. But my ultimate one is, is that his glory is given from me and you. I desire all of us to honor him in worship. That's his heart. That's his heart. So me him, him. Right? So both of them are good, right? Yeah. But one's a benefit and one's an act of worship. And some of us are desiring the benefit instead of the act of worship. Mm -hmm. See, I want to allow sozo or salvation to mature in me. And one simple way is, is to shift my focus from benefits to focusing on worship. And I'm not talking about a song. I'm not talking about a display of talent. I'm going to say this loud and clear. Worship is not a talent show. Amen. It's not a talent show. And I'm sick and tired of church talent shows right now. Mm-hmm. Because worship and your gifting is not for your glory. That's right. 
That's right. And stop acting like it. Mm. Because as easily as it was given to you, it can be taken away. Because it's not your talent, because it's not your glory. Everything you and I have was given by Him and empowered by Him. There is nothing that you have done to make you, make you so great. Amen. All you did was wake up and breathe air when you were born. Amen. But He's the one that gave you life. He's the one that gave you air. He's the one that caused you to wake up. He's the one that gifted you with the things. And listen, those things that you have in your life is because of the goodness and grace of God. Amen. And don't you ever forget it. It's not a talent show. We could care less. I, as a pastor, care less about your talent, and I care more about your heart. That's right. You can take your talent and sit down. I can get plenty of music to play up here. I can get plenty of other people. I can get some other preachers that I can put on the TV screen if we're all about talent and not about intent of the heart. Amen. God doesn't desire your talent. God desires your heart. Yes. Boy, this is good. <laughs> my life becomes a worship offering to God when the surrender of my will is to his word. Amen. When his word becomes priority. My surrender is a progressive state and will take a lifelong commitment of change. None of us have arrived. None of us. I'm not saying I've arrived. We still have rebellious tendencies ourselves. Speak for yourself. Anyway, so I... <laughs> we have to continually surrender we that. We, we have to continually yes. surrender Yes. I mean, come on. Let's be honest with each yes. other. Right? The truth is the truth. Whether it hurts or not, it's the truth. But see, when it hurts, that means I'm still living. That's because right. Because a dead man has no feelings. That's right. So salvation is more than just a moment. It is an eternal commitment to honor God. Amen. I don't see pins going because I know you didn't think of that. That's the Holy Spirit. Salvation is more than a moment. It's an eternal commitment to honor God. My salvation is more than a moment. It is an eternal commitment. There is a scripture, and it says about working out your salvation with fear and trembling. Now, it's not working for your salvation, it is working out your salvation. It is growing. It is surrendering more and more of yourself, dying to yourself because you're continually going to want to fight to live. And to say that you're not, you're deceiving yourself. I think John even talks about if you say you were without sin, that you're a liar. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, we are continually going to have to fight that. But here's the thing, the promise of no condemnation those in Christ Jesus is because I have surrendered it to Christ. It is not because I am not without fault. It's because I have surrendered it to Christ. When I defend myself, I'm still living for myself. Mm. That's right. Get in the word, guys. Get Stop in the word. So defensive. That's right. Get in the word. Find out the heart of God. He's empowered us to overcome. Surrender to it. Surrender. That deserves a high five. There you go, girl. Thank there you. you go, girl. <laughs> oh, Shondi. Yeah. When Christ becomes our Savior and our spirit came alive, we were actually birthed into a new life. Amen. Say, say new life. New life. So the old junk, yeah. the old ways, the old feelings, huh? the old disappointments. Yeah. The old I cannot do mindset is gone. Mm. I can do. Yes. So I can, can overcome. All things. I can overcome. Come. I can conquer. Through the power of Christ That's Jesus right. within me. It's because of the new life. Amen. Right? Say new life. New life. Our new life changed our position from sinner to son. Amen. Praise God. No longer a sinner. Mm -mm. But now a child of God. Amen. Amen. But listen to this. But our new life did not change our thoughts. Mm -hmm. It didn't change our deeds or behaviors. That's right. Huh? Yep. Those are changed through surrender. Yes. Amen. Right? We change through surrendering to the Lord of the new life. Amen. Jesus. Amen. So some of us, we, we're, we're children of God, but yet he is not Lord of our life yet. 
and I have to grow in his lordship. Yes. Right? I surrender and I'm surrendering to the Lord of the new life. Amen. And who is that? Jesus. Jesus. This new life is a journey of growing and maturing. Mm-hmm. They growing? Growing. Maturing. Maturing. This journey includes a progressive realignment of my thought, speech, and behavior. Yes. I constantly got to renew it. Yes. It's a constant. Realignment of my thoughts, my speech, and my behavior. Yes. It is a journey, or as Paul calls it, it's a race. A race of transformation to transform from who I was into the image of Christ. Yes. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 18. And we all, who with unveiled faces... Contemplate the Lord's glory. I caught you a minute ago and I asked you, do you want the glory of God? You contemplated it, right? Yeah. You're like, mm, yes, I'm thinking about that. I mm. want the glory of the Lord, right? Amen. A born-again believer does desire God's glory. Yes. And remember, there's, there's nothing wrong with desiring His glory, but it's how you define His glory. Is it His benefit or is it His worship? Are we desiring his benefits or are we mm. desiring his honor and worship? Amen. Okay? So we're contemplating the Lord's glory and are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory. We're transformed into his what? His image. His image with what? Ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. So some thought-provoking questions for you. How does my image look today? Mm. How am I looking today? And I don't need you to answer how my flesh is looking today, okay? <laughs> Ask yourself, how am I looking today? Am I reflecting Christ? Or am I reflecting sin? How am I looking today? Mm. Am I reflecting Christ? Or am I reflecting sin? My reflection shows who has the lordship of my life. Amen. My reflection right now shows who is the Lord of John's life. Mm -hmm. When the Lord of my life changes, my reflection changes. My image changes. Yes. Right? Yes. My life displays the glory of my Lord. My life displays the glory mm -hmm. of my Lord. The question I have is, is who is my Lord? question you should ask yourself is, is who, am I, who is my Lord? Because my life is giving glory to whoever who my Lord is. Yes. My reflection is a representation of who my Lord is. Amen. And if I say Jesus is my Lord, guess what? You're reflecting Jesus. Yes. My position may be son, but my behavior can be can indicate that I'm a rebellious son. Mm -hmm. Luke 15, 11 through 20, uh, 32 shows us the story of a prodigal son. It's a son with a rebellious heart. And guess what? It can cost everything. It cost him everything. A rebellious heart of a son can cost us everything. God still loves prodigals. Yes, he does. There's hope for you. There's hope for There's me. There's hope. There is hope. But in the middle of hope, I can be living in slop. Yes. You can be living without the fullness. I don't want to live off scraps. That's right. 
I don't want to dwell in dung. I especially don't want to do it when I can reside in my father's house. Doing his work and feasting at his table. Amen. I don't want to barely get by mm. wishing for my life to end when I could find joy and fulfillment in my father's house. Amen. It's when we rebel from the father's house. Mm. When we try to take advantage of the inheritance he gave us. Amen. Is when we find ourselves isolated, alone, and hopeless, sharing our living space with pigs. Mm. Amen. You know, a pig will bite you. You know, we have a promise of joy. Joy is one of the fruits for the of love. It's, it's, it's an outpouring of love and, and being in his love and surrendering to that love and, and putting that love into action. Joy is one of those things that we should have, right? right? So it should be a litmus, right? A gauge in my obedience. Because within rebellious, I can't be fullness of joy. I can I'm going to have moments of chasing happy and, and feeling good and having giggly moments, but that's not joy. Because joy is fulfilling. It's the fullness of God. Not moments or glimpses of it. It's fullness of joy. Amen. Fullness. Fullness. So how can I change my reflection from what the world made to what God created? It comes through surrendering my will to his word. Amen. My will to his word. Say that. Say my will to his word. If I want transformation to happen, I have to allow surrender to become part of my life, my daily life. Amen. Amen. I promised you last week I'd give you Four things, four ways to answer the question, how do I honor God? And I want to live up to my word, even though I'm not where I want to be in this. <laughs> but I'm going to give you these four things. We'll come back next week and kind of go back off. Did you enjoy it today so far? Yes. Amen. So how do I honor God? Number one, Jesus has to become my Lord. I cannot honor God if Jesus is not the Lord of my life. Hello? He can be the Savior, not Lord. That means I can do things that dishonor Him if He's not Lord. Right? And God doesn't... His presence is not where dishonor is. So number one, Jesus must become Lord. Number two, my life is prioritized with his purpose. That means my priorities have to shift. Okay? There's a lot of people that struggle with prioritizing things. One of the key things to being a good leader is being able to prioritize tasks. And a key to be able to be a good child of God is knowing how to prioritize things. That when things arise, they have to fall under the priority of God first. There will be times where that's not going to be easy. Plenty of examples in the Bible where family doesn't come first, God does. Plenty of things in the Bible where our job doesn't come first, God does. Our plans don't come first, God does. Amen. There's plenty of things in here where our events don't come first, God does. Amen. The Bible is very clear about it. We can skirt around that issue mm. to make it sound a little more appealing. But the, the bottom line is, if I want to honor God, my priorities must change. Yes. So number one, Jesus must become Lord. Number two, my priorities have to change. Amen. Number three, my praise must become exclusive. Yes. Mm. Mm. 
My praise must become exclusive. I've got to stop praising and honoring things other than my God. Yes. My Savior, my Lord, my Master. Do you realize when you grumble and complain that you aren't praising God, but you're giving glory to your unbelief? Amen. So my praise has to become exclusive. I got to stop praising the, the situation. I got to stop glorifying the curse. Mm -hmm. And I got to start glorifying my God, the creator. Amen. Number four, one of the most important ones, if not the most important. His love becomes who I am. His love becomes who I am. Mm -hmm. Everything that I mentioned without love is still self-centered and will not honor God because they are work-based. Yes. The intent of my heart is to do something to please God. It's not about your work to please God. It's your surrender that pleases God. It's your allowing lordship. Right? Yes. It's prioritizing him and putting him first. It's making sure my praise is exclusive. But if I don't have the love of God in my heart, and I'm not sharing the love of God with others, if I'm not doing everything out of the love of God, then everything that I have done has been done in vain. Because as it has not been done to glorify him, there's some other intent, some other hidden agenda. Why do I want his presence? Mm -hmm. I want his presence because I know it's a result of his glory, his honor, his presence comes. I don't desire his presence because of a goosebump. I desire his presence because I know it is a result of something. And that result is the worship, honor, and the glory of who he is. I long to see his glory because I know his glory resides in a house of honor. Yeah, I shared with the link team early this morning about knowing his heart. And to know his heart is to listen and obey. It, that's his heart. His heart is for you to hear him and do what he says. That's how we get his heart. Our heart. We want him to align with our heart. And he knows our heart. He knows everything about that. You can read that. You, you, you look up know and heart in your concordance. And you're going to find out everything he knows about you. But do you want to know his? Do you want to know his heart? Do you want his presence follows his heart, right? I want to know his heart. So I want to surrender my will to his will. That's his heart. That's his, his heart. Surrendering my will to his heart. Mm -hmm. And God, I want to know your heart. And that should be our heart cry. I want to know you, Lord. I want to know your heart. I want to be close to you, not because of the goosebumps and the benefits, but I want to be close to you because I want to know your heart. I want to see your face. I want to, I want to surrender to you because you are so amazing and marvelous and wonderful. And that's all. That's it. That's worship. Maybe next time I can get into the rest of that verse where it talks about glory to glory. I told you something, right? But what if I kind of presented it to you in this way? I know there are different interpretations of it. But what if it's growing from just wanting his presence to desiring his worship? From my definition of glory to his definition of glory. Yeah from something that is self-centered to something that is God-focused. Because he talks about we grow yes. glory to glory. Yes. Where it's not just... It's not just knowledge. It's not just knowledge, but it's an actual inhabitation. Yes. 
of the dwelling Amen. in the presence of God. Amen? Amen. His presence comes when his glory is given. Yes. Glory comes when glory is given. Glory yes. to glory. Yes. Yes. Glory comes when glory is given. I want to know his heart. Right? So we go glory to glory. We give and receive. Yeah. We give and receive. The cycle, it should become an infinite cycle of our life. Glory to glory. That's good. Amen. 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 Thank you for your time today. Yes. I pray that we got something. I pray that we got mm -hmm. something we can chew on. Mm -hmm. Right? I know I, I know I got a little gut punch on you today. <laughs> but that's okay because yes. I came yes. back and showed you how not to get sucker punched again, right? Yes. Trust me, when I wrote it, I was I I I, it was because I got sucker punched with it, okay? <laughs> so I got the same thing. So I had to share that with you, okay? Amen. I couldn't take it all for myself. It's like when I get a, a piece of candy that's terrible. I can't just eat it myself. i got to share somebody. You need to experience this, right, Rodney? <laughs> you need to experience this. He's like, is it that bad? Yeah. And he took some, so I didn't experience it alone. So I got <laughs> gut punched this morning, and I wanted to share that lovely feeling with you. Amen. Yes. But it's going to make us better. It's to help us grow. It's to help us grow. Right? It's to take and make sure my heart is right. Glory to glory. Glory to glory. That's right. How many of you want God's glory? Amen. That means that you want to worship Him. That's right. That I desire to worship. Don't you see how it's going in now? Yes. You see that? See, a lot of us want His presence. Mm. But it doesn't come without His worship. Amen. Come on, let's stand Amen. to our feet. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Mm. So, do we have a repent of heart today? Amen. 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 Not a bad thing. No, it's not. That means do I have a surrendered heart? Yes. Right? Yes. But let's lift our hands towards heaven. Thank you, Father. Father, I thank you for yes. a heart of surrender. Yes. Lord, today we ask you to forgive us. Yes. Yeah. For selfish ways. Yeah. For even being benefit focused. Yeah. And Lord, we need to be worshiped and glory to you focused. Come on, if you're in this place today, you're not right with God. You haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, or you're away from Him where you need to be, whether here or online. I just want you to raise your hand up really, really high right now. And online, if you want to reach out, you can do it right now in the comments. If that's you, I'm not right with God, and I want to be right with Jesus. I'm talking about take one hand and throw it way above your head. You may be watching, that's you. It begins with faith. It continues with faith. It begins right now with honor, and it will continue with honor. I cannot honor without surrender. So if you desire him first, let's surrender. Let's honor him. And by faith, let's receive him. Let's make this confession. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you now, a sinner, and I need a Savior. I surrender my life to you I come in faith receiving you as my Lord as my Savior Jesus Christ I declare right now Jesus is Lord I choose today to honor you I choose today to do it forever forever and ever in Jesus name Amen. Father, I pray for every person here. I thank you for them, God. It's, it's such an honor to serve in the kingdom with them. I declare they're the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, and more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. So bless coming in, bless going out, and everything they put their hands to, they prosper. Thank you so much for the revelation of your word, God. Thank you, Holy
Spirit, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the word today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Don't forget, if you haven't signed up for Jerusalem, do that in the rear of the sanctuary.